where do you, what brings you up? Like what, what takes you back? I mean, the music business definitely, all businesses, especially in this, you know, climate we're in right now, which isn't the greatest economic situation and all that kind of political stuff that we won't necessarily go into, but it's hard everywhere. But the music business is even harder because as you know, your route to market as an artist or as an executive is getting smaller and smaller. The labels are firing, they're signing less artists. So it, it, there are a lot of changes that go on in everybody's life, on every facet of, in every facet of the business. I find, and not to sound romantic or cliche, but my love of music and my passion and my desire to stay in it is what kept me going and what kept me going long enough and put me in enough positions to afford me the different opportunities that happen. It's an interesting question because when I was managing, um, and, and one of my things is as an a &R person and a fan of music, I love the fact that my job allows me to be out every night if I want. And in the city we're in, you can be out every night seeing, no joke, 10 or 15 bands. Every night is South by Southwest in New York City if you want it to be with the amount of venues and, and just the opportunities that are afforded artists to play. So I would still go out every night, whether I was managing the artist or whether they already had a manager, it didn't matter. And actually it caused a little bit of consternation amongst me and my wife because she would always say, this band already has a manager, they already have a label. What are you gonna do for them? Why are you going to this show? And I'm like, A, because I'm really curious and I want to see the artists and see what they're about, and B, you know, out of sight, out of mind. You've got to put yourself in a position to create opportunity. And if I'm at that show, and they already have a manager, or they already have a label, maybe the manager's there, maybe the label's there. Maybe one of them goes, hey Lee, I haven't seen you in a while. What are you doing? Well, I'm managing, and I'm this and that, and I'm hustling, and oh wow, you know, we have an opportunity, and I didn't even realize you might be perfect for it. So, it sounds very romantic and very, you know, grandiose, and, and you're not going to go to one show and that's going to happen. It's a law of average game. But if you're out and you're in it to win it, so to speak, and you're visible, you have the high probability of generating opportunities. And this is something that I would say to bands that I work with, or just bands that I know and am friends with, when they'd be like, oh, our manager or agent just got us this gig, and it's a Tuesday night, and you never know, and I'm like, well, what's the problem? Do the gig, what are you gonna do? Rehearse for no one, or go play the gig for you never know who's gonna be in the room. And I gotta tell you, if you go out there and you canvas a lot of people, artists and executives alike, a lot of the most amazing things and the amazing opportunities have happened completely accidental. You can have this strategic plan of attack with your artist, and it can all go according to plan, and still might need yield no results. But just taking the chance on this one thing that doesn't look sexy and it's not paying a lot and you're not necessarily expecting a lot of people to be there, but you never know who's going to be there. It could be that one person that's going to change your life. Somebody who's coming to see the band after you might get there a little early and things are running late and then they see you and they're like, who the hell are you and where have you been? And I can't stress that enough that you know, no matter what you're doing, whether on the artist side or the executive side, You've got to try and be creative and create opportunities for yourself and the business that you're perpetuating, whether that's you as a manager or a booking agent or a label or an attorney or whether that's you as an artist trying to get somewhere. And I'll say that's something I also said to my other artists. I was like, you need to go out and be visible. Go out and hang out at shows. There was this woman named Nicole Atkins who's an amazing artist. She's from Jersey, lives in Brooklyn now. And I would be amazed at the opportunities she would generate. She would be out at shows, and not in a cheesy, funny, like, hey, how you doing kind of way. Just a natural vibe woman, very talented, easy to talk to. And because of the relationships she fostered, you know, a couple years ago, she was on stage with My Morning Jacket in Madison Square Garden singing like a Marvin Gaye to Emmy Terrell song. And just the most amazing <laughs> opportunities happened for her that her status would make you go, how the hell did Nicole get that? But it's because she's worked really hard and she's been out there and put herself out there and created these friendships, created these relationships. And I will say the business is quite a business that's based on relationships and, and you know going back to the well of a trusted source or somebody you've had a good relationship with in the past. So I think first and foremost, it's the passion. Because if I didn't care about the music, it would just be kind of a burden. But I still have this insatiable hunger and desire and curiosity to see what this artist is like that I read about, that three people that I love, whose taste I love told me they're great. I want to see for myself, are they great? And why are they so great? So the love of music has kept me going, but also the fact that I'm trying to, and again, not hustle or be disgusting or be, hey, how you doing? Da, 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 da. There's a way to, to, to network in a classy and, and you know, 
organic fashion that could lead to opportunities and things that you never expected when you walked in that venue or that music building, you know, person speaking to you kind of thing. You never, ever know where it's going to come from. Can you give an example of uh, what would be a classic way to network? Just, you know, again, finding artists, or you're an artist I'm assuming, you know, finding artists that are like yourself and going to see the bands or going to see the show and maybe after the show introducing yourself and saying if you thought it was great, hey, I thought that was great, I'd love you to check out my music, maybe there's an opportunity for us to, you know, to support each other where I have, you know, a big fan base, you can come and be my support act or where you have a big fan base, we can flip the equation or... Just, you know, just different ways like that to put yourself in, you know, I mean the new music seminar is coming to town as it does every, I think it's June or July, maybe go down to that thing and just see who's around and do a little research, because they always list who the delegates are, who the speakers are, and see if there's somebody you want to get to, and then maybe approach them after the thing, because I find even the most powerful people, the Leor Cohens, the Craig Cowans of the world, the Sylvia Rollins, at these events, usually they do budget time and plan on engaging with, you know, the people who are coming to hear their, you know, words of wisdom, lessons of expertise, if you will.